Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series which is the third where we're looking at the basics of subtractive synthesizers. So previously we've looked at the oscillator section and we've looked at filters and today we're going to be looking at amplifiers. So this is looking at a bit more depth really at the envelope generator because the envelope generator is just controlling an amplifier and amplifiers just control volume. So that's a fairly easy concept to get on with. So at the moment everything we've heard so far has just had this basic ADSR applied to it. So it's going to maximum volume very quickly, then it's staying at a sustained level of 100%, and then it's it's dropping off very quickly. So 30 milliseconds isn't instant, but it's, it's pretty fast. If we put it to zero, the end is just a little bit more abrupt. So often you just want a little bit of release time in there just to stop things like clicks. So in some some cases, if you have it at zero, you will get little clicks at the end when you release a note because you may have a waveform where it's just cutting off instantly. And say so Retrolog's generally pretty good, but some other synths you'll get clicky sounds at the end. So sometimes putting in a little bit of release time at the end will really help you out. So we go back to sawtooth there so the amplifier section say we've got this attack decay sustain release so some synths will offer more complicated envelopes but if you can understand this generally you'll be able to understand others so sometimes they add in a hold at the top sometimes pre-delay before the attack comes in and curves and so on so we're just going to look at this today so First things first, so this is a fairly simple straight on, straight off. This decay time is doing nothing. The reason the decay time is doing nothing is because the attack time always goes to maximum. And the decay time is the transition between the maximum reached here and the sustain level. And if the sustain level is set to 100%, it makes no difference how long it takes you to go from 100% to 100%. So often I see people wiggling this control and it's like, it's not doing anything. And the reason it's not doing anything is because this is at 100%. You only hear the effect of this once this is at a different level. So to that end, let's play with that. So if we put this down to zero, we've got no sustain. And in fact, if we put all of these down to zero, you just get a tiny little click, which is the release time. And if we put that down to zero, we're just getting just those little clicks I was talking about. So you can just see, we just get a momentary bit of waveform and then it turns it off. A bit of decay time now allows us to have a note where even though you can see on the keyboard here I'm holding it down, it only lasts that long. So this can be really useful for those kind of arpeggiated figures where you've got the sound playing and you want to hear just little notes at a time. So if I just play an arpeggiated figure from my keyboard, we can see we get that nice dainty kind of sound. And you can bring this down. And you could automate that, obviously. So just a quick note, all of these controls are automatable. So if you look at the video on automation, you'll see how to do that. But you can just hit right and then noodle around with these and then edit them in the project window. You can see just getting that. So we haven't gone anywhere near the filter. But until we get to a point where the notes length bump into each other, it sounds quite nice once we've got past the clicky bit. And it sounds the same kind of idea as developing sounds as, as filter changing, etc. So that's a useful tip there. So understanding that this sustain level controls this. And then if you want a, a, a more realistic instrument simulation, they have some sustain level. So, you know, if you look at the decay of a guitar, it decays over a fairly long time, but then goes to a certain level now we can't make this tail off like a guitar would and if you watch back at vintage videos of people when synthesizers were first becoming commonplace you know there'd be all these extravagant claims that, oh it can replace any instrument and this that and the other and it, it maybe theoretically it could have done with a lot of other things happening as well but definitely the subtractive analog synths of the past are not capable of recreating every sound you hear but you can make it so that you've got a longer time and that will fade away. Or you can even just make this last a lot longer. Maybe just have a little bit there. 
Now, the interreaction between this and the filter can be really important. So if you want your filter to, to fade off with a release time, let's say, the release time of the amplifier needs to be longer because otherwise you're not going to hear it because the amplifier's turned off and gone home, yeah? So often you get like, why aren't I hearing the release time in the filter or, or the attack or whatever? Because if you've got a longer attack here than you have on the filter, you're not going to hear it. Etc. So bear in mind that the two interact in terms of the amplifier may veto all of your filter programming if you've set it inappropriately. So the two interact with each other, and you need to keep that in mind, you know, pretty much all the time. You'll see there's a valve slider here. So this is velocity sensitivity. So by default, if we put this back to the default sound, it doesn't matter if I hit this key really hard. You may hear this picking up on the background on my mic. I'm hammering that, or really gently, it's playing the same volume. So by putting in velocity there, so here it's 100%. So if I play really gently, we're not hearing it or just hearing it. If I hammer it now, you can hear that. So this is where you get velocity sensitivity, and that also works for the filter envelope. So if you want some velocity sensitivity there, you turn that up on the filter envelope, and then it will start to to work in there. Uh, release time, as we've seen, is how long it takes for it to die away after you let go of the key. So if I press this key and you watch here and see me release it, you can see it's taken a certain amount of time to fade away. And you can go, say, they give you pretty generous times on this with, you know, 30 seconds is a long time. I'm not going to do that, but if you want droney kind of sounds, you can have them fade in over long periods and fade out over long periods. And if I played this note, if it got to the 100%, it would take 12 seconds to fade away. So we won't go that mad, but let's go five seconds there. So, so you can see that's taking that long to fade away, etc. So those are the three basic sections of most subtractive synths. So you've got the oscillator, the filter, and the amplifier, the common things which most synthesizers ended up using because they were the most common things in terms of modular synthesizers. Now, if you're interested in looking at this in a bit more detail, I would strongly recommend you look at my voltage modular synth videos where I've just gone through this in a little more detail because you can understand how these are plumbed together. And again, if you want to understand this a little more, building effectively building a synth from scratch is a useful thing to do. There's plenty of people who do it in the real world with... Uh, Euro rack modules which you can buy and there's a big resurgence of this kind of thing but that involves a fairly significant investment in in money and space whereas having it in a synthesizer on screen um, is is a much cheaper because in voltage modular certainly was nucleus was free for a certain amount of time but it's definitely worth buying if you want to get into this kind of thing uh, and obviously it takes up no space it's just on your hard drive so Hopefully you found these three videos useful. We will look at this in more detail on the main channel where we're going to look at, a, eventually I'm going to do a series on Retrolog because there's so much more to Retrolog. It really is a pretty fantastic synth and I think it's a, a forgotten gem. But that's going to take me some time to do. But say, hopefully you found these videos useful. If you have, please like and subscribe because it does make a big difference to the way that YouTube recommends this. And I noticed that most of the time most of the people who view this are not subscribers to the channel. They're people who've seen this recommended and then watched it or they've searched for a specific thing. Hopefully you found that useful and I'll see you again soon.